Hello again. With us today is an actor and playwright who is a successful practitioner in the art of eye camp. Currently to be seen in Die, Mummy, Die at the Coast Playhouse, he is an artist in the tradition of Charles Ludlum and Charles Pierce. Please join us in welcoming yet another Charles, Charles Bush. And here's your man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. Do you know, once in a while, here in Hollywood, we do get New York. They bring New York to us. <laughs> and boy, am I thrilled today. We have a New Yorker, and I love him. He's international. Charles Bush, how are you? I'm thrilled to be you, here at long last. Oh, boy, you brought New York to Hollywood here t at the Coast Theater. Mm -hmm. That wonderful play. And tell me about it. You wrote it? You directed it? No, no, nope? no, no. I, I wrote it. I, I write them and I act them, but I, I, okay, I'm no director. Okay. So my, what I'm thrilled is that uh, I've worked with such close collaboration for so many years with a uh, wonderful director, Kenneth Elliott, mm -hmm. and uh, he directed really all my plays in New York, and he's moved out here, and so we were just so eager to work together that I came out here and we did this play just for Los Angeles. Mommy Die Mommy, what's all that about? Tell me, is that, uh, that's very much Joan Crawford or whatever. Well, what is. it was, is it's actually a rather high tone. It's, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the story of Clytemnestra and Electra. Uh -huh. But I, I decided to update it a bit and, and said it in 1967 because uh -huh. the, the dresses were better. And it's, uh, so when you update it, it becomes sort of like a Joan Crawford, Betty Davis uh, horror film uh -huh. in the uh -huh. style of uh, Hush, Hush, Charlotte or, or Dead Ringer. I'm reading the reviews, Los Angeles Times. Oh, they all say Charles Bush. My God, you, you're doing so well at the Coast Theater. They've been Theater. very, very kind to me, and we're selling out. I'm so I like thrilled. that word. They've been very kind very to kind. you. Well, <laughs> I, you know, the thing is, my expectations were rather, rather low in a way. I, I, you know, it's not like I was hoping that this would be something that we would, you know, then move to Broadway or something. I just right. wanted to do a play out here in L.A. and for, sort of summer stock in a way and just have, have uh -huh. fun and work with Ken again and... and uh, um, how long have you known Ken? I just want a little bit of little success, yeah. <laughs> well, no humiliation. Just but no humiliation. But it's not. It's a big success here. You're packing them in that small little theater. A little adorable little theater, right? And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's they have this marvelous it's, marquee right on Santa Monica Boulevard that everybody can see. Yes, nice. when they're driving by yeah, or yeah. walking by. Right. <laughs> That's West Hollywood yeah. for you. Tell me, Charles Bush grew up where? In New York City. I'm, really? I am a New Yorker. I, I can't escape. Really, it's nice to be out here for a couple of months just to get away. Uh huh. But you went to Northwest. Tell North me about Northwest. Yeah. yeah, Northwest, great dramatic school. Yeah, I went Charlton there. Charlton Heston went there. And Anne Margaret and all sorts of people. Yeah. Tell me about Charles Bush at Northwest. Well, you I studied didn't do writing very well. Or, <laughs> well, you studied acting, writing. I was a theater major, and actually, that's where I met uh, Ken Elliott. We were um, together in a yeah, set. Yeah. So you've known him a long time. Long time. Don't uh -huh. ask me how long. A long time. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's we started. Uh, we, we started working together. Then when we both moved to New York after graduation. Tell me about your first play, Outtakes of a B-Movie. What's that all about? That was a play that was never actually produced. Um, just when, when I got to Northwestern, I was determined. That I, I just always wanted to act all my life. And, uh, and I thought when I got to Northwestern that uh -huh. I'd be a real bigwig in this theater department. Uh -huh. And I learned very quickly that the theater department of a big school is really a microcosm of show business. Right. And I just wasn't being cast at all. And I was just a little too weird and uh -huh. odd. And, why, for, for, why do you think you were weird and odd? I don't know. I, don't know. I thought I was perfectly I'm looking wonderful. At, you're not very weird and odd now. I guess I'm a little less odd than I was <laughs> at the time. And, and so anyway, so, so I was very discouraged because I, I wasn't being cast. And um, fortunately, there was a liberal arts program at Northwestern, so I got a chance to take different writing and, and literature courses, uh -huh. and that kind of steered me into writing. Mm -hmm. Charles, for, but you say you love show business. Who encouraged you? You were going to movies all the time, because Betty Davis's, Joan Crawford's, that's really into your life a lot. Yeah, I see yeah, it. I absorbed I'm so really, much of that. Yeah, you really did. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah, I guess I was kind of a peculiar, like the old little, peculiar little boy, and I, and you know, there was all, uh, when I was growing up, 
Um, there were so many old movies on television. Of course, now there are again you know, with um, right. Turner Classic movies and all that. But uh, you know, we, you know, I used to watch the 4:30 movie every day and movie greats and all that. And mm -hmm. and so by the time I was maybe 11, I had seen all the great sort of women's pictures. And at 11, were you doing Betty Davis? I was doing Norma Shearer more Norma than Betty Shearer. Davis, <laughs> who was always her my particular favorite. I, I, I matter of fact, um, one time this. Friend, a childhood friend of mine showed up at one of my shows. I hadn't seen him in, you know, 25 years or so, uh -huh. and and he said, "Oh, I'm, it's just perfect that you're doing this now because I remember as a kid, you uh, pretending to be um, Norma Shearer as Marie Antoinette." At our house. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's inevitable. You, so after you left college, what happened to um, Charles Bush? Went to New well, York. Uh, yeah, I, I. You got in the theater got, there. The there theater. was a wonderful well, little theater, Joe up, uh, Joseph. Joseph uh, but I never worked there, though. No. no, but your plays did, or something. No, it's no? just that they, they, at one point they can, you know, you know, I had long the a, apprenticeship, theater. and they almost did a play of mine. But, but no, what fortunately what happened was uh, I started perf being a solo performer. Oh. I did a one-man oh. show, and I was very industrious and booked myself all over the country and uh -huh. doing this show called Charles Bush Alone with the Cast of Thousands. Really? And I did all these different little pieces, and and so in a way, my career is almost an old-fashioned one that I, in a sense, did vaudeville for six years in, by doing this act right. all over the country and performing in front of every kind of audience. And then finally, when um, Ken and I put on this little play, Vampire Lesbians of Sodom. That little, was a big hit. And we did it in this tiny East Village um, after-hours bar, art gallery, uh -huh. performance art space. And so after I'd been kicking around though for quite a while, right. and so by the time the New York Times actually first reviewed me, they had seen they were seeing a performer who had actually paid their dues, and uh -huh. I'd been around for a while. So you feel that you paid your dues, Charles? I'm still paying. I'm skip. Yeah. I'm still paying them. Don't we ever stop? <laughs> I'm tired of paying my dues. Has it been tough for you? Has it been, has it been tough for you? You're so young, though. No, oh, it's been, I've had a hard huh? time, I've had a hard time. If you could change one thing in <laughs> Charles P uh, Bush's life, yeah. what would you have done? What would you do? Do it differently? Yeah, something a little different, if you want to change your life right now. Because you're very young. You're talking like you're an old... Uh, I'm uh, older than you think. No, no, go ahead. Uh, well, now I would, you know, it's funny. I, I, when I hear people interviewed and they're asked, would you change anything? And they'd say, never. I think all oh, those big phonies. But now that you're asking me this for the first time, I... In a way, I guess I wouldn't. You know, I had to do. I, I realized very early. I had a very pragmatic sense of showbiz early on, mm -hmm. and maybe because I'd been going to Broadway shows as a kid right. you know, all my life. Uh, anyway, I had a pragmatic sense of it, and I just knew that I wouldn't have any career unless I uh, somehow had to carve out a new one for myself and one that really had no precedent. So I started writing material for myself, and mm -hmm. I ended up performing in drag, which was not what I thought it would be, but I became a leading lady. You, you prefer the trousers, right, Tr Charles? I prefer the dresses. Trousers, or the dresses. I don't know. Do you prefer well, I've only the played one part in and pants. Really? I've only always the leading lady. Wouldn't you like to play the trousers no. as Charles? No. Not really. I did it once. We did a play called You Should Be So Lucky, and I was pretty well received in that, but I found that there were other people who could play that part just I as well. I asked Jim Bailey the same question. And what do you say? And he said no. He's been doing his character. He's a, he is an illusionist. Jim mm, brilliant. is a real, brilliant. He is. One. Jim Bailey is an illusionist. He does that particular character. Yeah. Yeah. You are you do many characters. You do be, you know. I've well, I don't really do impersonations as much. No. As, you know, I play a character, but I like but to do. But you insert the yes, I like doing little little sort of nuances. Or I'd like to evoke every once in a while this a flash of uh, Betty Davis or I like Susan the way you Hayward moved on that stage, like the that. movement on that yeah. stage. But I don't really just. I'm not out there just doing like you know what Charles Pierce would do to uh, a yes, you know, famous yes, lady. Yes. You know, I play my fictional character, and then every once in a while I just sort of evoke a little bit just to pun punctuate it. So how are the audiences here in LA accepting the show right now? Well, it's funny, you know. Um, I've always enjoyed performing here, and uh, I've I found actually that the audiences in LA, in some ways, even are more um, hip to the movie parody than New York sometimes. Really. Maybe, well, first of all, everybody from L.A. is from New York. From New York, that's right. And, and so many people are involved in the theater. The theater is theater much the better here now than it was before, 20 years ago. Yeah, there's a lot of theater it's bring, going on here. Yes, thank God to people like you. So I'm bringing, glad to do the play here. Bringing plays here and right. What do you have uh, coming up now, new play? Very exciting. Well, two things. 
uh, it's really kind of a, could be a really good year for me. Um, uh -huh. Well, if, if one thing was that I just finished last week um, filming a movie version of one of my plays, Sucko Beach Party, and uh, it's all in the can, as they say, or wrapped up and uh, wrapped. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so that'll be out like next August, a uh, year from now. Who's in this? Uh, Thomas Gibson, who's on the show, TV show Dorm and Greg. Uh -huh. He's a wonderful actor, and all these interesting young TV actors. Uh, this fellow, Nicholas Brendan, who's one of the leads on Buffy the Vampire Killer, and a wonderful actress, Beth Broderick. Uh -huh. and we've got a great cast. So we just finished that. So that was thrilling, because that's the first movie of one of my plays. And, uh, and then the other thing I'm doing in the winter, uh, I have a new play that Linda Lavin is going to star in in New York. Oh. She's I'm good. so excited yeah. about that. I kind of wrote the role for her. Uh-huh. Yeah. You enjoy writing? Yes, I really do. I started writing purely just for to... others. I mean, for others. Well, it's then... a new it's a new thing because I, as I said, I, I started writing just to provide myself with employment. Right. But then I, as you know, after all these years, I, uh -huh. you know, uh, learned so much, and and now I I have kind of a writing career in itself, and I really do enjoy that. Why do you think the vampire and the lesbians is such a big uh, smash? That show. Why well, do you think? Well, I think at the time, in 1984, when we first did it, right. uh, it, it was kind of a, it came at a certain perfect time. Well, for one thing, when we first did it in East Village, uh, the East Village was in all the news that summer. Uh, uh -huh. Madonna had just sort of right. emerged. And Keith Lucky Her Madonna. And Keith right. Herring, the artist. <laughs> and the performance art scene in the East Village was particularly uh -huh. written about in People magazine. And, and uh -huh. we were kind of there at the right time. Uh -huh. And I also think uh, it was at the height of the AIDS crisis. And I think that there was kind of people, at the, particularly gay people, then really wanted to kind of lose themselves in a wacky, uh -huh. campy comedy. So uh -huh. I was glad to provide them with the, a little levity. What makes life important for uh, Charles Bush? Well, I, I, I think it's important to, I find it, well, you know, I, I've, my creative life is my, um, uh -huh. I guess, my vocation and my avocation. So. So I just enjoy so much challenging myself to try to to You're spiritual, le learn You're learn very new, spiritual, learn are you? new things. Mm, I wouldn't say that, that unless I guess creativity is my my god. So I guess <laughs> we're maybe, in July right now, Charles. We're in spiritual. California. What is your favorite month of your year? Do you have a favorite month? I like the spring. I do too. Yeah. Why do you like the spring so much? Do you think? We've, uh, You've been in love? Have you been in love, Charles? Yes. You have yes. someone? Yes, really? Mm -hmm. Good, good. For many years. You have, huh? Yes. What has been the hardest for uh, for Charles Bush? The hardest? Yeah. Well, not being confused with Charles Ludlam. I uh, know. <laughs> that happens to me so often. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and uh, matter of fact, recently um, um, there was a revival of his play Irma Vep in New York, and it was yeah. a big hit. And, I, and so many people, I guess Charles, Charles, and uh -huh. they... Um, congratulated me on this play and, and so I, uh -huh. I, yeah, I hadn't had a hit in a while so I started saying thank you mm -hmm. or and, and I get confused with Charles Pierce too at times As a matter of fact I, I did a, a reading a stage reading this past year of Auntie Mame in New York where I played Mame and John Davidson was in it oh I love John and he said when we met though he said oh it's so good to see you again Charles we had so much fun doing Love American Style mm -hmm. I thought, well, love American style, you know, uh -huh. and I, I said, well, thank you, you know, I enjoyed that too. And then later he um, he said, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I thought you were Charles Pierce, and I said, well, you know, he was, was quite a bit older than me, and yeah. he said, well, when we did it, he was your age. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I, I, it's it's hard for me sometimes getting confused with all the Charleses. Is Charles Bush a happy person in general? Yeah, I'm a really simple person. S I like that. Simple. I'm very, I what like you that. see is what now you get. You, I like that word, simple, because simplicity is the most important thing. I'm not in too. Life. I, I have no. I also no complications. Well, let's put it this way. I, I sometimes, <laughs> I sometimes have no sense of irony in that. If you told me right this minute that uh, the, the Martians had invaded the studio next door, I'd say really. <laughs> and I just kind of yeah. take you. I take yeah. kind of everything at face value. I'm looking at you. I think you know who you really are. I try. And you like I, yourself too, don't you? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I I think it's really important, particularly in a, if you're in a creative field, that you have to know yourself. And and my and I think it's a lifelong search toward mm -hmm. knowing exactly who you are. And I, I'm still learning, but but I've got a, kind of a good sense of it. So the theater gives you a great joy. Love it. I love to be on stage. I, I and sometimes I've had to try to reclaim that joy because it's easy to get so 
worked up working, about sort yeah. of the business of things or critics or yeah. various things that can, you can lose track of what's important and, and only think about the show is to be done for the critics or, or to make the money back. Right. And so I've had to at times just kind of shake myself and say, wait a minute, I'm doing this, what it's about is to give something to an audience and, and that's really that's the, main, the main point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't lose it, and I have lost it at times, but, but in a way even doing the show here this summer, it's part of kind of reclaiming that, uh -huh. just the j simple joy of, of performing, and right, it's a wonderful right. thrill. You're here at the Coast Theater now, and mm -hmm. you're there uh, five days a week, I think, isn't it? Or or something Thursday like through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through August. You brought a clip. I want to see this wonderful clip. Well, it's not uh, from Die, Mommy, Die, no, unfortunately. No, but it's a chi something Japanese underneath. <laughs> we have some, tell me about it. Well, we did um, Vampire Lesbians of Sodom for so many years. You know, it ran in New York for five years, though I only did it for two. I, otherwise, I really would, right. would have been fit for the loony bin. But, uh, but then we even went to Tokyo and performed it there. And while we were in Tokyo, they filmed it for Japanese television. And <laughs> so I have this ta wonderful tape, unfortunately, since the well, the Japanese there's subtitles on I it, which is say, and also they didn't really understand what we were saying, so, so there's no laughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but despite all that, it's, I think you get a little gist of, of that let's, show. Let's see it, okay? Can we see it? Yeah. Thank you. Look at your face in the glass. For two thousand years, you've worn the same expression. Do you know what that is? Mm. You're smelling shit. You always look like you're smelling shit. Everywhere you go, you smell shit. Lady, that's your problem. My kind always smells the roses. You don't smell too many roses in Siberia. What are you flapping your gums about? 1952. You convinced me to take over your tour of I Remember Mama. When we got to the Soviet Union, you had me arrested as a CIA spy! Oh, never! You did. While well, you were starting a new career in the movies, I was freezing my ass off in that gulag! 1964. <laughs> I was top contender for the Oscar. Jimmy the Greek had me winning 10 to 1. Yet I lost it. Don't think I don't know. It was you who spread those filthy rumors that I was buffing the Hillier Jackson. Why won't you get off my back? Honey, you got it all wrong. You're the one who's been persecuting me. Ha, me? Ha, ha. You've been on the desk with me for 2,000 years. Yes. I'm obsessed with you. You made me what I am. Do you think I can ever forgive you for, for turning me into this thing? There is no human feeling. <laughs> this creature who thinks of nothing but her own survival, clawing and attacking anyone who poses a threat to me. Yes, I'm at the top of my profession, but I'm not so damn proud of it. Excuse me, I got a floor to clean. Last year, Lee Ullman and I toured Africa for UNICEF. While I was in the Congo one day, I left leave and visited a tribal witch doctor named Puji Dung. Puji Dung! I see the name is familiar. He comes from an ancient line of jungle sorcerers, Dr. Mbeza. He has taught me all I need to know to destroy you. So what do you expect me to do? Run around in circles! Do it! Get out your voodoo dolls! This modern world stinks. Broadway's dead. My apartment's going co-op. You can't get a decent bialy! Go ahead, give me the jungle face out. You'd be doing me a favor.
Uh, Domi Rigato. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> you speak Is Japanese, that, too? Uh, no, but although, you know, when we did the show there in Japan, I, I learned a rather, rather long curtain speech uh, phonetically in Japanese, and, and uh, it was so fascinating seeing this sort of curtain lift of people's eyes when I finally spoke their language, and, and I wished that, had I known that, that I would have kind of stuck in little phrases here phrases, and there. Phrases, yeah. yeah. But it's so funny about Vampire Lesbians of Sodom. It, it was such a kind of fluke success, and, uh -huh. and for so many years I, I used to be kind of embarrassed by it and think, oh, it's the worst thing I ever wrote, and, and you know, and, and, care, and just be very silly but about today it. today you're very proud well, of it. I started though. watching, I recently did a, a workshop at UCLA, and, um, and we showed clips and stuff, and, yes. and I showed this, this actual clip, and I thought, it's kind of cute. It and, is. And no wonder people enjoyed it so much, and I should just stop being such a, you know, pain in the ass about it's it. It's totally nothingness cuteness. That's what it's all fun, fun. Fun. It's yeah, really yeah, inno it's, it's, innocence. It's really there, fun. there was an innocence to it. That yeah. that was sort of the surprise, I think, that with this yeah. decadent title, that there was kind of a sweet innocence to the show. Do you enjoy the theater or clubs better? What do you prefer? Performing or yeah, attending? performing. Performing. Oh, I prefer the theater. Theater. Yeah, you because know, you're more theater. Would you yeah, say? Yeah, I'm theater. I've uh, I've done a nightclub act, but I, which is fun in itself. But when I I prefer the theater because you know you can have a run and really you know, right, right, you know, right. play it every night and. How do you relax, Charles? After a performance, uh, oh, like? I just I must go out for dinner. I just lo I love going to nice restaurants with friends, and that's about my favorite thing to do. I think all actors do the same. Yeah, it's very expensive. It is. It costs you a lot of money when you do a play. You go out every night. <laughs> do you go out every night, Charles? I, I try. To, when I'm doing a show, I, I find it hard just to go back. When Charles to my, my when Charles room, uh, uh, Bush is not doing a show, and you're in New York. Yeah. What do you do? What's your... Uh, I'm the most sedentary, lethargic person. It's really awful. Uh-huh. No, I just, um, I've, I watch a lot of TV. You like the old movies, though. love old movies. And now with Turner Classic Movies, uh -huh. it's, it's like a drug. It seems that you get your ideas from the old movies. Yeah, like King's it? Row, like uh, my favorite. That's my favorite film. You love King's Row? That's my favorite. That's Betty Fields. Betty, Betty Fields is great in that. Mm, she, wonderful. And Anne Sheridan and Ronald Reagan are... Ex president, he's yeah, there with and found his no legs. Mm. The way he screamed in that movie, and she was downstairs when he discovered what a scene. Wonderful, yes, I love uh, um, I love Norma Shear and I love Vivian Lee and, uh, uh -huh. and some uh, Waterloo Bridge. It's one of my favorites. What do you think about the young kids? They're, do you think they like these old movies? Third. Well, I'm, you know, there was a middle period where, you know, when I was growing up, of course, we had all these old movies on TV. Then there was, during the 70s, right. there, there was, like, no movies on TV. Uh -huh. And now we have, all, we have all these cable stations, so uh -huh. I'm hoping that the young kids now can start uh -huh. knowing the movies like we do. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the movie uh, Mommy Die, Mommy, who's in the, who's in the film, the, the, I mean, the in play? the play. play. We have a wonderful cast. Um, Greg Malavy, who I guess people know best from Mary Harpin. Mary Harpin plays my husband. Uh -huh. uh, and... Uh, who I murder in a rather grotesque fashion. And uh, we have wonderful actor Mark Capri, who's worked for many years in England, mm -hmm. and he's a marvelous actor. And an actress, um, Wendy Worthington, who's kind of a semi-regular on Ellie McBeal. Oh. And a wonderful young actor, Carl Andrus, mm -hmm. who I brought with me from New York. He's and a young act actress, Dory Barton, who's really uh, terrific. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a good cast. It's a good cast, very strong yeah. cast. I'm, thrilled to the production and what's been very touching too is that all, all of our old designers from New York who did Vampire Lesbians and Psycho Beach Party they all flew out here uh -huh. really at their own expense. The wardrobe to, is great to, to in the, the show. Play. The set's great, the wardrobe's yeah. good, it's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful. It's a lush uh, play for that little theater. It is a lush play. Yeah. 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 So I've seen some good the theater in that, um, real good theater in that pl uh, playoff. Yes, I've seen some of the posters the for the, the past productions there with wonderful real people. Real good, yes there are. Charles Bush, um, you're going to be leaving here and you're going where after with this go, I go back home. But now you're I not taking to San Francisco? No, no. Really? Um, Why? I just want to do it here. I, I, <laughs> really? Just, you know, I, mean, I suppose if but somebody But you're such a big me. success here in L.A. with it. Don't you think it would be bigger than ever in San Francisco? You never know about San Francisco. I tell you, it's, I'm always surprised when so many shows that are um, going to can't be... Can't be shows things, right. go to San Francisco. They don't do well. I think maybe because San Francisco does so many of those shows so well themselves that maybe they, they don't need us interlopers. Oh, you mean the blank, uh, the blank, what's that uh, play's been written, running there for so many years? Yeah, they have their own tradition. Blank. Yeah, they do, they do, don't they? Yes, yeah, a good one, too. Yeah. Do you have a favorite movie right now running? That's in the movies at the moment? Yeah, at the moment, Charles. You know, I went to see that movie Arlington Road 
with Tim Robbins and uh, Jeff Bridges yes. as a thriller. It's awfully good. Really, it scared me. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you scared me in the theater. I mean, this uh, this play yeah. you're doing. I mean, that you wrote. You're killing everyone in the play. Oh, right Tell left. me more about this play. I well, want to get. Well, you know, I kind of like, what I like to do. I like to have my cake and eat it too. I like to both spoof the movie genre, but I also like it to, in some ways, um, succeed as the kind of movie itself. Right. So this is a, a spoof of, of thrillers. Uh -huh. And so we have all sorts of murder, rather grotesque murders take place on stage. So I, I like to think that there's maybe a little bit of actual suspense as uh -huh. well as us making fun of it. Mm, it is. It's. It's. The audience loves it, though. And there's. Well, there's, it sort of evokes all sorts of movies. We have a little bit of everything from Dead Ringer and Hush Hush Charlotte to a little bit of the se Chekhov's the Seagull. Uh, it's kind you of see, you seem mishmash. hard on yourself. Are you hard on yourself sometimes mm -hmm. with certain things that? Uh, I'm kind of a tough critic on myself. Are you? Yeah, but I when I do well, I first want to pat myself on the back. I uh -huh. I'll admit it. Uh -huh. It's a joy for you to have talking to you today. It's, it's been so much really, fun. You're, you're such a legend really here. Really a legend. I'm thrilled no, to, legend. to meet you and no, be on your show. You're very, very sweet. You know, it's been difficult for, for you and for everybody as, as an actor working in dresses. You think it's been difficult well, the, to let the straights of America to accept certain people like Jim Bailey, mm -hmm. like Charles Pierce's, like Charles Bush's. To really accept, but you know, to come to you, straights really—they're coming to you. They're, they're, they're really coming. Well, well, see, the thing is, I do think that the the worst battles were fought by people before me. I think Charles Pierce he was, uh, was, was a, such a brilliant. Performer. He was a female impersonator, and he had. A, and but he, you don't consider yourself a female impersonator, Charles? Do you? Well, I consider myself, you know, an, an actor who an performs actor. female roles, but. Right. If you want to call me that, you, you can call me that. I, I won't. But Jim Bailey gets very upset if you call him that. Yeah, he wants, he to, wants to be called an illusionist. He is an actor illusionist. And you are, too. You're an actor yeah, yeah. who wears women's clothes and for a character. Yeah, yeah. See, Charles, when I think of Charles. But Charles Pierce is not. Charles he was Pierce an was an impersonator. Yeah. Charles Pierce was a female yeah. impersonator. And a wonderful comedian oh, and personality. And, and so anyway, the, anyway uh, the people before me, Charles Ludlam and Charles Pierce, right. and they really had a harder time, I think, being accepted by both critics and, um, let's say, mainstream than, than I've had. So Would you say I'm you have grateful. to have a good sense of humor to be what you are doing? I think in life you have to have a good I mean, sense yeah, of true, humor true, and, and a way of, of humor about yourself. Uh, I find not take it serious. Well, to take bad experiences and turn them into anecdote very quickly, so you can. Is that what Charles Bush it. does? Yeah, yeah, very quickly. Uh huh. I see. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, I enjoyed today, and you are a delight. You're at the Coast Theater, and I'm definitely going to come and see you. Okay. You are just wonderful, and I thank you for talking to me today. Okay. Thanks for having me. Who influenced you, anyway, to get in the business? Has anyone influenced you? Well, m my father um, was a frustrated opera singer and ended yes. up having a record store in Yonkers. But he uh, loved old movies so much, so I used to watch movies till you know, 2 in the morning with my father when I was growing up. And he took me to the opera, to the old right. Met, when uh -huh. I was uh -huh. 8 years old. And that kind of changed my life forever, just the whole sort of Hello again. With us today is an actor and playwright who is a successful practitioner in the art of eye camp. Currently to be seen in Die, Mummy, Die at the Coast Playhouse, he is an artist in the tradition of Charles Ludlum and Charles Pierce. Please join us in welcoming yet another Charles, Charles Bush. And here's your man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. You know, once in a while, here in Hollywood, we do get New York. They bring New York to us. <laughs> and boy, am I thrilled today. We have a New Yorker, and I love him. He's international. Charles Bush, how are you? 
I'm thrilled to be here at long last. Oh, boy, you brought New York to Hollywood here t at the Coast Theater. Mm -hmm. That wonderful play. And tell me about it. You wrote it? You directed it? No, or no, no, no. no. I, I wrote it. I, I write them and I act them, but I, I, okay, I'm no director. Direct. Okay. So my, what I'm thrilled is that uh, I've worked with such close collaboration for so many years with a uh, wonderful director, Kenneth Elliott. Mm -hmm. And uh, he directed really all my plays in New York, and he's moved out here. And so we were just so eager to work together that I came out here and we did this play just for Los Angeles. Mommy died, Mommy. What's all that about? Tell me, is that, uh, that's very much Joan Crawford or whatever. Well, what is. it was, is it's actually a rather high tone. It's, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the story of Clytemnestra and Electra. Uh -huh. But I, I decided to update it a bit and, and said it in 1967 because uh -huh. the, the dresses were better. And it's, uh, so when you update it, it becomes sort of like a Joan Crawford, Betty Davis uh, horror film uh -huh. in the uh -huh. style of uh, Hush Hush Street Charlotte or, or Dead Ringer. I'm reading the reviews, Los Angeles Times. Oh, they all say Charles Bush. My God, you... You're doing so well at the Coast Theater. They've been the very, end. very kind to me, and we're selling out. I'm so I like thrilled. that word. They've been very kind very to kind. you. <laughs> well, I, you know, the thing is, my expectations were rather, rather low in a way. I, I, you know, it's not like I was hoping that this would be something that we would, you know, then move to Broadway or something. I just right. wanted to do a play out here in L.A. and for, sort of summer stock in a way and just have, have uh -huh. fun and work with Ken again. And, and, uh, the trousers, right, Tra Charles? I've heard the dresses. Trousers, or the dresses. I don't know. Do you prefer I've only the played one part in and pants. Really? I've only always the leading lady. Wouldn't you like to play the trousers no. as Charles? No. Not really. I did it once. We did a play called You Should Be So Lucky, and I was pretty well received in that. But I found that there were other people who could play that part just I as well. I asked Jim Bailey the same question. And what do you say? And he said no. He's been doing his character. He's a, he is an illusionist. Jim mm, brilliant. is a real, brilliant. He is. Brilliant. Jim Bailey is an illusionist. He does that particular character. Yeah. Yeah. You are you do many characters. You do be, you know. You, I've well, I don't really do impersonations much. No. As, you know, I play a character, but I like but to do. But you insert the yes, I like doing little little sort of nuances. Or I'd like to evoke every once in a while this a flash of uh, Betty Davis or I like the Susan way you Hayward moved on or, that stage. Like the that. movement on that yeah. stage. But I don't really just. I'm not out there just doing like, you know, what Charles Pierce would do to uh, a yes, you know, famous yes, lady. Yes. Yes. You know, I play my fictional character and then every once in a while I just sort of evoke a little bit just to pun punctuate it. So how are the audiences here in L.A. accepting the show right now? Well, it's funny, you know, um, I've always enjoyed performing here and uh, I've I found actually that the audiences in L.A. in some ways even are more um, hip to the movie parody than New York sometimes. Really? Maybe, well, first of all, everybody from L.A. is from New York. From New York, that's right. And, and so many people are involved in the, the theater. The theater is much the better movie. here now th than it was before, 20 years ago. There's a lot of it's theater bring, going on here. Yes, thank God to people like you. So I'm bringing, glad to do the play here. Bringing plays here and right. What do you have uh, uh, coming up now? New play? Very exciting. Well, two things. It's really kind of a, could be a really good year for me. Um, uh -huh. Well, if, if one thing was that I just finished last week... Um, filming a movie version of one of my plays, Psycho Beach Party, and uh, it's all in the can, as they say, or wrapped up and uh, wrapped, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, so that'll be out like next August, a uh, year from now. Who's in this? Uh, Thomas Gibson, who's on the show, TV show Darman Gregg. Uh -huh. He's a wonderful actor, and all these interesting young TV actors. Uh, this fellow, Nicholas Brendan, who's one of the leads on Buffy the Vampire Killer, and a wonderful actress, Beth Broderick. Uh -huh. and we've got a great cast. So we just finished that, so that was thrilling because that's the first movie of one of my plays. And, uh, and then the other thing I'm doing in the winter, uh, I have a new play that Linda Lavin is going to star in in New York. Oh, she's I'm good. so excited yeah. about that. I kind of wrote the role for her. Uh -huh. yeah. You enjoy writing? Yes, I really do. I started writing purely just For to, others, I mean, for others. Well, it's, a new, it's a new thing because, I, as I said, I, I started writing just to provide myself with employment. Right. But then I... Um, how long have you known Ken? I just want a little bit of little success. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no humiliation. Just no humiliation. But it's not. It's a big success here. You're packing them in that small little theater. A little adorable little theater, right? And it's, it's yeah. just, they have this marvelous it's, marquee right on Santa Monica Boulevard that everybody can see. Yes, nice. when they're driving by yeah, or yeah. walking by. Right. <laughs> That's West Hollywood yes. for you. Tell me, Charles Bush, grew up where? In New York City. I'm, really? I am a New Yorker. I, I can't escape, really. It's nice to be out here for a couple of months just to get away. Uh-huh. But you went to Northwest. Tell North me about Northwest. Yeah. yeah, Northwest, a great dramatic school. Yeah, I went Charlton there. Charlton Heston went there. And Margaret and all sorts of people. Yeah. Tell me about Charles Bush at Northwest. 
Well, you I studied did do writing, very well. Or, well, you studied acting, writing. I was a theater major, and actually, that's where I met uh, Ken Elliott. We were um, together in a yeah, set. Yeah. So you've known him a long time. Long time. Don't uh -huh. ask me how long. It's a long time. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's we started. Uh, we, we started working together. Then when we both moved to New York after graduation. Tell me about your first play, Outtakes of a B movie. What's that all about? That was a play that was never actually produced. Um, just when, when I got to Northwestern, I was determined that I, I just always wanted to act all my life. And, uh, and I thought when I got to Northwestern that uh -huh. I'd be a real bigwig in the theater department. Uh -huh. And I learned very quickly that the theater department of a big school is really a microcosm of show business. Right. And I just wasn't being cast at all. And I was just a little too weird and uh -huh. odd. And, why, for, for, why do you think you were weird and odd? I don't know. I thought I was perfectly I'm looking wonderful. At you. You're not very weird and odd now. I guess I'm a little less odd than I was at the time. <laughs> and, and so anyway, so, so I was very discouraged because I, I wasn't being cast. And um, fortunately, there was a liberal arts program at Northwestern, so I got a chance to take different writing and, and literature courses, uh -huh. and that kind of steered me into writing. Mm -hmm. Charles, for, but you say you love show business, who encouraged you? You were going to movies all the time, because Betty Davis's, Joan Crawford's, that's really into your life a lot. Yeah, I see yeah, it. I absorbed I'm so really, much of that. Yeah, you really did. Why? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah, I guess I was kind of a you like the old movies? peculiar little boy, and I, and you know, there was all, uh, when I was growing up, uh, there were so many old movies on television. Of course, now there are, again, you know, with um, right. some classic movies and all that, but, uh, you know, we, I used to watch the 430 movie every day, and movie greats, and all that, and, mm -hmm. and so by the time I was maybe 11, I had seen all the great sort of women's pictures. and At 11, were you doing Betty Davis? I was doing Norma Shearer more Norma than Betty Shearer. Davis, <laughs> who was always her, my particular favorite. I, 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 matter of fact, um, one time this friend, childhood friend of mine showed up at one of my shows. I hadn't seen him in you know, 25 years or so, uh -huh. and, and he said, oh, I'm, it's just perfect that you're doing this now, because I remember as a kid, you uh, pretending to be um, Norma Shearer as Marie Antoinette at our house. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's so inevitable. You, so after you left college, what happened to um, Charles Bush? Went to New well, York? Uh, yeah, I, I... You got in the theater got, there. Got in there the was theater. a wonderful well, little theater, Joe, uh, uh, Joseph... Uh, but I never worked there, though. No, no but your plays did. Or something. No, it's no? just that they, they, at one point they can, you know, I, you know, I had long the public a, a apprenticeship, and they almost did a play of mine. But, but no, what fortunately what happened was uh, I started perf being a solo performer. Oh. And I did a one-man oh. show, and I was very industrious and booked myself all over the country and uh -huh. doing this show called Charles Bush Alone with the Cast of Thousands. And really? I did all these different little pieces, and and so in a way, my career is almost an old-fashioned one that I, in a sense, did vaudeville for six years. In, by doing this act right. all over the country and performing for every kind of audience. And then finally, when um, Ken and I put on this little play, Vampire Lesbians of Sodom. That little, was a big hit. And we did it in this tiny East Village um, after-hours bar, art gallery, uh -huh. performance art space. And so after I'd been kicking around, though, for quite a while. Right. And so by the time the New York Times actually first reviewed me, they had seen. They were seeing a performer who had actually paid their dues, and uh -huh. I'd been around for a while. So you feel that you paid your dues, Charles? I'm still paying them, Skip. Yeah. I'm still paying them. Don't we ever stop? <laughs> I'm tired of paying my dues. Has it been tough for you? Has it been, <laughs> has it been tough for you? You're so young, though. No, oh, it's been. I've had a hard huh? time. I've had a hard time. If you could change one thing in <laughs> Charles P uh, Bush's life, yeah. what would you have done? What would you do? Do it differently? Yeah, something a little different. If you want to change your life right now, because you're very young, you're talking like you're an old. Uh, I'm older than you think. No, no, go ahead. Uh, well, now I would, you know, it's funny. I, I, when I hear people interviewed and they're asked, "Would you change anything?" and they say, "Never." I think all oh, those big phonies. But now that you're asking me this for the first time, I, in a way, I guess I wouldn't. You know, I had to do. I, I realized very early. I had a very pragmatic sense of showbiz early on, mm -hmm. and maybe because I'd been going to Broadway shows as a kid right. you know, all my life. Uh, anyway, I had a pragmatic sense of it, and I just knew that I wouldn't have any career unless I uh, somehow had to carve out a new one for myself and one that really had no precedent. So I started writing material for myself, and mm -hmm. I ended up performing in drag, which was not what I thought it would be, but I became a leading you, lady. You prefer the... As, you know, after all these years, I uh -huh. kind of, uh, learned so much, and, and now I, I have kind of a writing career in itself. and. I really do enjoy that. Why do you think The Vampire and the Lesbians is such a big uh, smash, that show? 
Why well, do you think? Well, I think at the time, in 1984, when we first did it, right. uh, it, it was kind of a, it came at a certain perfect time. Well, for one thing, when we first did it in East Village, uh, the East Village was in all the news that summer. Uh, uh -huh. Madonna had just sort of right. emerged. Right. And Keith Lucky Her Madonna. And right. Keith Haring, the artist. <laughs> and the performance art scene in the East Village was particularly uh -huh. written about in People magazine. And, and uh -huh. we were kind of there at the right time. Uh -huh. And I also think uh, it was at the height of the AIDS crisis. And I think that there was kind of people, at the, particularly gay people, then really wanted to kind of lose themselves in a wacky, uh -huh. campy comedy. So uh -huh. I was glad to provide them with the. A little levity. What makes life important for uh, Charles Bush? Well, I, I I think it's important to I find it. Well, you know, I I've, my creative life is my um, mm -hmm. I guess my vocation and my avocation. So, so I just enjoy so much challenging myself to try to to your spiritual le learn so learn new, spiritual, thing, learn new things. Mm, I wouldn't say that, that unless. I guess creativity is my my god. So I guess <laughs> we're maybe in July right now, Charles. We're in spiritual. California. What is your favorite month of your year? Do you have a favorite month? I like the spring. I do too. Yeah. Why do you like the spring so much? Do you think? We've um, you've I, been in love. Have you been in love, Charles? Yes. You have yes. someone? Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. For many years. You have, huh? Yes. What has been the hardest for uh, for Charles Bush? The hardest? Yeah. Well, not being confused with Charles Ludlam. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> that happens to me so often, and and you know, and, and uh, matter of fact, recently um, um, there was a revival of his play Irma Vep in New York, and it was yeah. a big hit. And, I, and so many people, I guess Charles, Charles, and uh -huh. they um, congratulated me on this play, and, and so I, uh -huh. I, yeah, I hadn't had a hit in a while, so I started saying thank you. Mm -hmm. Or and and I get confused with Charles Pierce too at times. Matter of fact, I, I did a, a a reading, a stage reading this past year of Auntie Mame in New York, where I played Mame, and John Davidson was in it. Oh, I love John. And he said, when we met, though, he said, oh, it's so good to see you again, Charles. We had so much fun doing Love in American Style. Mm -hmm. I thought, Love American Style, you know? Uh -huh. And I, I said, well, thank you. You know, I enjoyed that, too. And then later, he, um, he said, oh, I, I'm sorry, I thought you were Charles Pierce. And I said, well, you know, he was quite a bit older than me. And yeah. he said, well,